logic board replacement for our Mac Mini A1283. The tools we're going to need are tweezers, a prying tool, and a screwdriver kit with a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver. Go ahead and start by flipping over the Mac and prying into the seam on the right side. We're going to need to pry in from both sides, so use the flat-headed uh, screwdriver as a prying tool to come in from the opposite side. Working your way and applying pressure, we need to kind of bend the case a little bit and push out the, uh, f the frame. Once you have that separation, you can just push it apart and you can see it was being held in by pressure with plastic uh, pieces on all sides. We'll first need to remove three antennas. They're held in with pressure, so by just gently pushing up on them, they should be able to unclip. Don't lose the spring that's underneath. Go ahead and pick that up and put it over to the side. Now peel back that little guarding tape. Move on to the next antenna, the gray one. Go ahead and pull that up as well and move that spring over to the side. Flip the Mac Mini around and get to the third antenna. This one will have to push in with our fingers and squeeze together as we pull up on it. And that should come right out like that. And this third spring. Okay, we'll need to remove these four uh, Phillips head screws that are uh, securing the DVD drive, optical drive. Okay, there's one there that we'll need an adapter for, and one right there. Go ahead and remove those four. Use an extension to remove that one right there if you need. Go ahead and remove these two. Removing these four screws, uh, now we need to go ahead and Peel back and disconnect that bridge ribbon cable right there. Gently disconnect that. Peel back that little piece of tape. And now the fifth and final screw uh, right behind there. That will release the DVD drive. And that should be able to come out, slide out just like that. With the DVD dri drive removed, we need to remove the hard drive bracket uh, enclosure. It's being held in with four Phillips head screws. You shouldn't need an adapter for this, a uh, standard reach screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver should be able to get those. Go ahead and remove those four Phillips head screws as shown. With those four screws removed, go ahead and start prying and lifting up. Uh, that hard drive and bracket has a bridge that connects it to the logic board, so just gently push it up. One of the antennas might pop out, uh, like this red one that I just moved. It popped out during the uh, removal. Okay, now let's disconnect that power button right there. It's being held in with a uh, standard connection cable. Go ahead and pry that up nice and gently. Don't go too fast. You don't want to rip that cable. Now the IR cable in the back. Go ahead and unplug that as well. Also carefully. You don't want to rip that. Now with the T15 screwdriver, go ahead and remove that last post. This post secures the logic board uh, to the frame. Once that's removed, you can go ahead and start lifting up on the board from the back and then just pull it right out of the socket like that. Logic board installation. Reinstalling the logic board, go ahead and just push it right in uh, into its socket and lay it down and make sure that all the uh, holes for the screws line up. Go ahead and reconnect the power button first. With the power button reconnected, go ahead and reconnect the uh, IR cable connection. Now go ahead and place back the T15 post uh, on the rear left side of the logic board. Let's reconnect these three tricky antennas. The blue one is reconnected first and it goes all the way on the left side and then the red one goes all the way on the right side 
lay them down in the orientation like you see here. Now on the bottom right side, reconnect the gray one and lay it down next to the blue one. Now let's put the hard drive bracket back over it. Make sure that you have enough antenna slack for all of the antennas to reach the places where they get clipped in. Make sure to check that that connection bridge is plugged into the logic board and you have a nice and solid connection. Go ahead and secure it with the four Phillips head screws. Uh, double check to make sure that none of the antennas became disconnected when you place this back. Let's slide in that DVD drive into the socket make sure that that's nice and connected. The first thing we want to do is we want to secure that rear Phillips head screw so that the uh, drive is nice and flush with the I.O. bridge while we work on the rest of the connections. Go ahead and plug back in that uh, ribbon cable that connects the I.O. bridge uh, to the uh, DVD drive. Okay, it's plugged into two places. Go ahead and secure that. Once that's secure, go ahead and put back the two Phillips head screws on the left side and then the two Phillips head screws on the right side of the DVD drive. That last fourth screw might need a uh, extension socket. Okay, now let's place back the antennas. Go ahead, put that spring back and load that first Bluetooth blue antenna. It just should clip right in. Okay, now place back the spring and the gray antenna and that should click right in as well. Let's flip it around and the third and final antenna. Let's go ahead and place back that spring. This is the one where you have to pinch together with your fingers and then clip on top. So go ahead and pinch that and then push down on it. There we go. That's a lock. Okay, go ahead and place back uh, the cover. Make sure to align everything. Once everything is uh, nice and aligned, go ahead and apply uh, a good amount of pressure to lock everything into place.